Well, let's start. Um, so we are asked to do a flow chart or pseudocode. We'll do flow chart because it's fun. And then we'll do the um, Python code. So let's start with a flow chart. To do that, we need a new, a new uh, thing here. We'll go to draw.io. And we're going to create a new diagram. I'll call it, what's this one? It's, this is about average weather, weather average, or temp average or something. So with all average programs, average programs are like, yeah, they're, they're just, you should become just familiar with them. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> it's kind of like a standard thing. But the cool thing about average programs is they kind of have three parts. You're gonna always have to have a loop. You can't do an average if you can, well, you could. It would just be dumb to do it. You, you can do an average without a loop, but the best way to do an average is with a loop for sure. And why don't I have a, what's this all about? Yeah, put a grid on it so I can see it. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's why I didn't see it before. Okay, you can go away now, done with that. Um, so I guess I can make these bigger too. But the thing about average programs, as I was saying is, um, typically we use a loop and uh, so you can divide and it's a small program. And so it's only got kind of three parts to it. You got stuff that you do before the loop, you got stuff that you do inside the loop and you got stuff that you do after the loop. So what you do before the loop is you, uh, we call it initialize all our variables, but basically the variables that are important for, a, um, for an average is you're gonna have a total and a count. So you initialize them, that means you set them to zero. And then during the loop, you increment your variables. So that means you're gonna to add to the total and you add to the count. And then after the loop, you calculate the average and they calculate the average by taking the total, and dividing it by the count. So it's total and count, total and count, total and count. They show up in all three places. At the start, you set them to zero. In the middle, you add to them. And at the end, you divide one by the other. And that's basically it. So let's do start um, weather and it's weather average, but start weather will be fine. Can you read this? Is this too, is this okay? Is it? Yeah, all right. Um, so um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set those variables to zero. It says, because if I look at this thing, it's going to be for a week. We're gonna do this seven times. So we're gonna have a count. We're gonna make it equal to zero. And then we're gonna inc increment the count seven times. So the next thing is going to be uh, just a, a little box. I'm gonna put both things in here. We're gonna set the uh, sum to equal to zero. We're going to set a count equal to zero. So this is initializing our variables. This is the stuff we do before the loop. So we do this before the loop. So that means the next thing is going to be the loop. So how do we do a loop? A loop's got a condition in it. So we'll put a condition in our flow chart. Um, a condition looks like a diamond, right? There's a diamond. So our, our, um, our condition for this kind of loop is we're going to do this according to this description. It says we're going to do it seven times. And every time we display the temperature and we calculate the average. So in our loop, our decision is going to be the control of our loop. We control the loop with the count. So the decision is going to have a condition in it, which is going to be the count. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask this is what the condition, a decision is like a question. And so the question is, is the count less than seven? And it either is or it isn't, right? So, I mean, this is, these things are Boolean. Boolean means true or false, right? So it's either true or it's false. Um, the count is less than seven. Well, if the count is less than seven, then we need to add, uh, we need to um, get, a new, a new, a new, new uh, what is it, a temperature. So we're going to get the temperature. So getting the temperature, that's going to be one of these special symbols, right? It's gonna be this 
This thing here is our inputs or outputs, right? So we're going to get temp. And we're going to do that as long as the count is less than seven. So once we've got the temp, it actually says that we're going to display the temp, display the temp each day. And so I'm going to have another one like that. It kind of looks a bit like that. It's an output, but this symbol works for in, input and output. Display the temp. And after we've displayed the temp, the only thing to do is to increment the total and the sum. So like I said, we these total and sum, they appear in three parts of this loop. Before the loop, we initialize them. Inside the loop, we increment them. After the loop, we divide them. So we're inside the loop, so we have to increment these two. So how do we increment them? Well, again, another, another little square box. Um, and we can, I, I might do them together because they kind of work together. No, no, they're separate. They are separate. So the sum is equal to the to the um, we add the to the we add the temp to the sum. So that's incrementing the um, the total, and then the next one is another increment, and that's incrementing the count. So the count takes the count is incremented. So that that count is what's controlling the loop. So this is actually the end of the loop. The loop starts here with the decision. And by the way, I should put a, I guess I should say that this is, this is true, right? We go here if it's true. If it's true, we do this. So if it's not true, what do we do? Um, well, we're gonna do something out that side there if it's not true. Sorry about my arrows. My arrows look kind of bad, sorry about that. But um, yeah. I. Um, but this is the end of the loop. So the end of the loop, what do we do when we get to the end of the loop? We go back to the condition and we see if the condition is still true. So how we can show that is we can just draw an, an, a new line. I'm gonna start the line here and I'm gonna end the line back up here on this. I'm gonna try and pull the line out a bit. Ah, there we go. So that it doesn't sort of encroach on those other things. So we got, our, we got ourselves a line that goes back to the count. That's the loop. Now that's the thing about a loop that you'll be able to see on any flow chart is a loop is always going to have an arrow that goes backwards. Most of the time in our flow chart, the arrows are going forwards, right? All these other arrows are going forward. This arrow is going backwards. That's a loop. So that would be in, in the way that we write our programs, that would be a while condition. There's another condition that also works with that. You can do a for loop, but we're not worrying about for loops in this course. So this means that that must be a while. And this is actually the condition. So we're going to be able to translate that directly into a while statement. Now that's the true side. The true side was going down. Well, what if it's false? I put the false out here. What if the count isn't less than seven? If the count isn't less than seven, then what are we going to do? So that means the count has already become seven. So what are we gonna do now? This is where we calculate the average. So we, so we keep doing this until the count becomes seven. When this is false, that means the count is seven. So then we calculate the average. So the average is gonna be equal to the total or the sum divided by the count. By the count. That's our average. And that's it, right? The program says your output should look similar to this. Finally, the average temperature. So all we got to do now is print it. So I'll just do another another thing here, which is going to be a um, an output box, which is going to print the average. Oh, didn't need that extra. I shouldn't. And so. And then all I need is my end. That's the end of the program. That's it. So that flow chart actually, I think that's, I'm happy with that. If you guys are happy with that, that looks good. And of course you can make it more beautiful than mine if you want, but um, 
don't have to either. Let's try and make it a bit bigger. So yeah, we got our start up top and that's it. So the loop is indicated by this arrow going back. We just got a while loop. This will now translate very easily into Python text. So let's see if we can do that. Python text. Um, so that would mean starting idle. Come on, idle. Idle's a bit idle. <laughs> it's lazy. All right. Oh, it came up. There we go. All right. So this one I'm going to put away because just because here's our idle program here. All right. So we're going to start here and we're going to go through there. But first, I'm going to say what's the name of the program. The program is our uh, average temperature or something like that. Temps for the week. It's average temps for the week. And I can just start coding straight from my algorithm. The algorithm is in the, the algorithm is in the um, flow chart. And if I'd done my flow chart correctly, I should be able to just translate that directly into Python code. And that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing that happens I see there is oh, sum takes the value of zero. And then I see count takes the value of zero. So that's, this is called, oh, now look, when I see this, the sum change color, eh, that means that that's a reserved word. So maybe I better change that. So I'm going to call that sum temp. That means I've got to change all these, right? And here. And here. Because, all right, so I forgot about that. Sometimes we forget about things as we're going. But it seems that sum is a reserved word. You really shouldn't use reserved words as your variable names. It's kind of a bad habit to get into. So I don't want to give you guys bad habits. So um, I'm not going to use that as a variable name. Let's try and have good habits. All right, so we'll give it another name. And also it should be a name which is easy to remember or that means something. I mean, you, you could put variable names like S and X and A, but then it's kind of hard to read your program. And so if you make a mistake, it's hard to fix it. So I'm just going straight from the, from the um, flow chart, right? So the next thing is... We can see that that's a, when you see a diamond like that, it means it's either an if or a, or a um, for or a while. Now I should, so that's the true. Let's put what happens if it's false. This, this bit here, right? Yep, spell false, right? Okay, so while, and we just put the condition. The condition is count less than seven, colon, and now, after the colon is going to be all this stuff which is inside the loop. And I can see that there's four things that are inside the loop. So I better have four statements here, right? Four statements for all the things that's inside the loop. So the first one is get temp. I can't say get temp. That's fine for pseudocode. And it also works for flowcharts, but it doesn't work for Python, right? I can't say get temp. I have to say what? Temp takes a value of input but the input is always going to be a string. So I'm gonna to have to convert the string to an integer. So tape, temp takes the value of input converted to an integer. Oh, wrong one. And another one. And that input is going to be, you know, I don't wanna type it out, but it's gonna look like this, right? Enter a temperature. So I'm just gonna copy that because why not? And so that's, my, it looks like I'm gonna need more room for this. Yeah, I can put it up there. So that's getting, that's my get temperature. All right, so you kind of have to know a little bit of Python programming to do that, but you know now, right? You know how to do an input and you know how to convert it to an integer. And so that's what we've done there is we've got from the user an input and we've converted it to an integer. Now, when I, you saw when I just hit enter at the end of that line, it brings me to the exact right place. And I told you a second ago, we have to do four lines in here, at least four lines. 
So the first one was to do this. The next one is to display. This is the display thing here. So display the temp. That's going to be this. That's going to be a print. So what are we going to print? We're going to print this. The temperature on day one is. Oh, so I'm just going to copy that because again, why not? Now, the problem here is that not every day is day one. Only day one is day one. So what are we going to do about day two? Look, the next one is day two. All of this is going to happen in a loop. There's day one, then day two, then day three. Well, with, what is how can we get what day it is? Well, it would be the count because we got a count for every day. So what we, we don't want to print the number one, we want to print the count. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to um, take away that one and we're going to replace it with the count. But the problem is that the count is a integer and when we're printing, it's a string. So we're just going to convert the count to a string first. Then we'll be able to print it. And so this is going to be the count. We're going to print the count. That's that's fine for the count. But what's the next thing? Oh, we have to say, what's the temperature? So there's two things we have to do. We have to do the count and the temperature. So I'm going to do the same for the temperature, which is just to convert it to a string and put that in the print and that's going to be the that's going to that's how we're going to print that line so we're saying we're taking this directly from here we're saying what day it is we're using the count to say what day it is mm, actually this isn't going to quite work because it's going to start with a count equals zero that's kind of ugly so um yeah i'm just going to add one to the count so that it won't so that the first when it's zero it'll say one when it's one it'll say two when it's two all right so i'm kind of that will work because first time through it'll be zero uh, when it gets to seven and it would have been when we add one to make it eight but that's going to happen at the end of the loop and so we'll never print the number eight so this will still work all right so we got get temp we got display temp the next one is to update the total So that's just some temp, just exactly as it is in the flow chart. Some temp equals some temp plus temp. Spell it right. That would be better. Some temp, some temp. Yeah, you know, actually, I've seen a lot of students do this, and I think it's a great idea. So there you go. Students are giving me good ideas instead of me giving them ideas, right? But what I've seen students do is when they do a when they, they set a variable, then every time they use it for after that, they just copy and paste. I think that's a good action. I think that's actually a good practice. And it's not being lazy, but by copying and pasting, you make sure you spell it the same way every time. Because a lot of times people get errors because they spell it different ways. So I don't do that, but I probably should. I think it's a good idea, you know, to do a copy and a paste and it save you some typing and your variables will always be the same. And so you, you, it'll save you some errors in your program as well. So maybe I'll do that here, right? So the next line is going to be, I'm going to copy that and paste it like I've seen students do. And I would do a plus and then paste it again and say plus one. Yeah, that, that actually saves typing, right? I mean, I'm into that. That's a, Now, the problem is that I got a, a plus sign where it should have an equal. So count takes the value of that. And we could do that with... As I said, I really do like that copy paste because it is going to avoid some errors, which is even better than saving typing. Um, now, the next one is the average thing. An average is equal to sum temp divided by count. So that's out. So we're finished the loop here, right? We finished the loop. Count is the last one. So we're outside the loop. So we have to outdent. Instead of indenting, we're outdenting. And now we have to calculate the average. That's the next thing on that on our on our flow chart. It's that one there. Calculate the average. And so we're going to say average. And again, I'm going to do this thing that I saw students do, which is going to be a copy of the sum temp. 
going to be that divided by that. All right. And now all we've got to do is what? I think we're almost done, right? If we look at the um, thing, it says to print the average. We had to calculate the average to print it. So now we're going to print it. And again, let's print it in the exact right way. So we see the exact right way is here. The average temperature of the week is. Mm. Well, well, the other thing I notice about the temp, after the temp, they they actually put a period. So let's just do it exactly right. I'll put a period in there. And we'll do the same with this. So I'm going to print. What am I going to print? I'm going to print this, the average temperature of the week. Lots of copying and pasting, right? No problem. So why not? Okay, the average temperature of the week is, and then here's obviously going to be the ob the average temperature of the week, and we've got a, a, a period at the end of it. So I'm going to do that also. And this is going to be going to have a period here. That's the end of the end of the sentence is that period. And here we're going to take the average and convert it to a string and include that. So in here is going to go the average. And that should work. It's not a big program, is it? So this is problem one. So when I go to run it, I'll save it as problem one is temperature problem one, I guess. Because we do this three times. Temp problem one. Save that. Okay, run, run, run. Okay, so now we're going to check and see if the way we run it is the same as the way they say to run it. So looks so okay so far. Enter to a temperature. Yeah. So we're going to enter the number forty-five first time up. Huh? Enter temperature forty-five. The temperature on day one is 45. Yeah, that's working just right. Then it's asking us to enter the next temperature, 44. Temperature on day two is 44. Enter another temperature, 46. Yeah. Uh, day three, so day four is 45. Uh, day four, five is, this one, 45, thank you. Day five is 47. And day six is 43. Oops, 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 oops. That's it. Okay. Day seven is 43. And the average is 45.0. So our output's exactly the same as theirs. So we've tested it with the test data. We've got our um, flow chart, which we didn't have to vary from it. The flow chart works exactly with our code. So that's what I would do. That's it. Can you see this? I, you, you know, yeah, no, you cannot. There. Cool. Easy peasy. Japanesey. Right. So problem two and three is we just take this and we change it. We edit it to make it do some other stuff. Um, where is that? Mm. So it's just, if you look at it, what we do here is, well, what if the user tells us how many days we're going to do it? So instead of doing it seven days, the user is going to tell us how many days. Okay, so what's going to happen here is instead of having a seven, we're going to have some number from the user. We're going to change this seven to some number from the user. But everything else will be pretty much the same. But we'll need to delete this arrow and we need to get the number from the user. So let's see if I can get a, the right box. Uh, I don't want a rectangle. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, that didn't work. 
Is this plus, what does that plus do? No. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an arrow and that just goes straight through to the next thing. That's not great. So undo that. Oh, insert, how can I pay? Okay, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this one. Yeah, yeah, copy it and paste it up here. Well, it just sits on top. But instead of getting the temperature, this time I'm going to get the, the user is going to tell us how many days. So get, get the number of days. Num of days. Okay, so now I can put some arrows in there, I suppose. Where's that arrow? There. So join that to the start and join the other end to getting the number of days. And I guess I have to do the same thing for, oh, what, what's that? Oh, you get the idea. One more arrow. Join that to get the number of days and join that to, count, to get to setting, the, to initializing the values. Oh, well, it's kind of like that. I got two arrows in there somehow. One of them can't be right. All right, so sorry about my arrows, but I hope you get the idea. I'm sure you can draw a better arrow than I did. Yeah, okay, so now that's joined. About this arrow, it's floating in space. Okay. So that's all I had to do there, but we it won't work if we still try and count to seven. We're gonna count until, so that's all we have to do is change this to as long as it's not less than seven, but less than the number of days. That's it. I mean, you know, it's, it wasn't a big change, but, we, but, it, but it is a change. And so we should change our, we should change our program. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of writing a new program all over again, I'm just going to add these things and change it as a new program. Uh, so I add the things and save it as a new program. So here's our old program. I have to get the number of days before I can do this. So that's going to be a new, a new input here. So uh, the number of days is going to take the value of an input, which I'm going to convert to an integer. Because you know all inputs come as um, strings. And so if you want a number, you have to convert it. And so we got it. We're going to say, here's what we're going to say. How many records do you have? Okay. How many records do you have? That'll do. So I'll put that in there. That'll work. How many records do you have? And then, okay. So I'm running out of time for the, um, for the video. Um, I don't know, we'll, just, we'll stop when we run out of time. Looks like we got 10 minutes. So instead of having a seven here, just like we changed it here, we're gonna change it here. So instead of seven, it's just gonna be num days here. That should work. So, um, oh, there's one thing that won't work. It's going to say a week. We don't have a week. Mm. See, if you look over here, it says over three days. Mm. So, I'm gonna put something in the middle of that. Uh, okay, so what do you think I'm gonna put in the middle of that? Well, obviously it's gonna be a number. So temperature, the average temperature, instead of, of the, it's gonna be over. The average temperature over what? Now you could either put count here or you could put num days. It's up to you. I think num days is probably better. So that's how many times we're doing the loop. And so we're saying how many days it is, that would be fine. So I think that would work. I think, so there's a couple of changes we had to make. We had to, we had to let the user tell us how many times we're good. The user is controlling the loop. And so we let the user control the loop. And so to do that, we changed 
what we had before was a preset number. We changed that to the variable, which is the one that the user gave us, but it still works the same. It's still a counted loop. The last thing we do before the while is set the count. The last thing we do inside the while is upgrade up, update the count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as, and this is going to be, instead of problem one, that's going to be problem two, just so I can see the difference between them. Then I'm going to run it. Oh, I'm going to kill it because um, there's some messy output there because we still had the old program on there. So how many records do you have? Some, I'm hoping that my output will be the same as this one. How many records do you have? Three, What enter a temperature, 45. Temperature day one is 45. Yep, enter a temperature, 44. Uh, enter a temperature, 46. Well, the average is gonna be 45, right? Yeah, the average is 45 over three days. Um, now, that's not quite right, is it? It says over three. It's supposed to say over three days. So I missed something here. Over three days. So I'll put that back in. Run this again. We'll get it right this time. I mean, we'll get it. So how many records do you have? Three, uh, 45, 44, and 46. Three days. Easy peasy. Wasn't that fun? Oh, they said no. Okay, it is fun. <laughs> All right, there's one left, which is the sentinel loop. So these two were counted loops. The sentinel loop, I want you to focus on what do we do before the loop stops, starts, and what do we do the last thing inside the loop? We always control the loop with those two things. So in these programs, the last thing before the loop started was a count. The last thing before the loop ended was we updated the count. And so the count was controlling the loop by, you know, you don't have to put those there, but I put them there because it makes it easy to fix the program. I can see what's the program, what's happening with the program. I know what's going on with the count. Before the loop starts, I know that, oh, count is zero and count gets incremented. It makes it a lot easier to see the program, what's happening with the program, and then to edit it. Now, the last one is to make it a sentinel loop and we've got a different thing controlling the loop, where in the other two loops, it was being controlled by the count. This time it's gonna be controlled by the temperature. The temperature is going to be entered by the user. So again, as I said, what are we going to do before we start the loop? The thing that's gonna control the loop is gonna be the temperature. So I can see that, right? Let's just... Uh, Instead of being controlled by the number of days, it's controlled by the temperature. So the, the control is going to be the temperature must be less than or equal to, an, well, yeah, less than or equal to 100. That's the control instead of count. All right, so we have to change this program, that means, darn, <laughs> um, because what did I say if we're going to have a loop? We need, oh, that's not joining, is it? Anyways, these things, we still need them. We still need to get, no, we don't need get number of days. We don't need that because this program is different. We don't need that. Yeah, okay, that's gone. Got arrows all over the place. It's like arrow time, right? Oh, get out of the way, yeah. Zoom. Oh, where, where did my, um, where'd he go? I guess I deleted him. <laughs> so this is the start. And what I do is just make it a lot smaller. Oh, got arrows going towards it. That's, that's not great. All right, we want an arrow, but we want it to come from the start to this. Okay, so sorry about all the messing around. So what we've got is we need to have, before we can go into the loop, the thing that's controlling the loop is the temperature, but we don't have a temperature, so we need to get one. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm going to give myself some space and I'm gonna get the temperature. Well, here's get the temperature. So I'm just gonna copy that. Oh God. 
gosh, <laughs> arrows going everywhere. And yeah, so there's my, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the, um, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna set my initial values. Then I'm gonna get the temperature because the temp temperature is the thing that's gonna control the loop. So before I do the loop, I'm gonna get the temperature. But it also means that the last thing I do inside the loop is going to be to get the temperature again, because the temperature controls the loop. So the thing that controls the loop is the last thing we do before we go into the loop. And it's the um, last thing we do inside the loop. I need another arrow coming from here. So we get the temperature, we display the temperature, we add the temperature to the total, we add the count, but this arrow, instead of going back there, we're gonna have one more thing, which is going to be to get the temperature. Because get the temperature controls the loop. I hope this is making some sense. Uh, at least it didn't come with the arrows this time. All right, so. Oh. Last thing inside the loop now is going to be get the temperature. And so I need to, oh, can I move this over there? I can, right? Make it bigger. Yeah. All right. So I need to have an arrow that goes, this is the last thing in the loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that loop and go back here. Oh. Arrow, give me an arrow. my horse for an arrow or my kingdom for a horse or something like that. Okay, so now we've got our loop. We got our arrows going down and back. Actually, we have a little problem with this program because it would be possible for the person, first time we asked them for a temperature, what if they gave us a temperature of 120? Then this would be false and we'd go over here, but then the problem would be our count would be zero. And you divide by zero and your computer program crashes. And so that wouldn't be any good. And so uh, we have a way of solving that problem. It's not a hard one. We just need another if statement. And so I'm going to get rid of this arrow and we're going to have another if statement. Oh, yeah, pull all this stuff down. We're going to need a bit of room. All right. So, um, how can I do an if statement? Oh, here we go. Control C, Control V. And it always copies right on top, right? But what we're going to check this time is we're not going to check the temperature. We're going to check to see if the count is zero. Because if the count is zero, 